Hello and welcome to Lenrix Realm. I am Matt and in this video I make a miniature completely from scratch. Did you ever wonder why you like miniatures? I mean, I assume you like miniatures when you're watching a video like this, but seriously, did you? It's a question I ponder on often, simply because I like to enhance the limited time I have with a hobby. So I try to find the most fun parts. And the more I delve deeper and deeper into it, some aspects of the hobby are getting more interesting, while some are becoming just a necessity. For example, I don't consider myself a great painter, but I like my skill set enough to get results I'm mostly happy with. My aim is to get the minis on the tabletop for a war game or an adventure of Dungeons and Dragons, and therefore my desire to get better is driven by getting faster, not to have a piece for a painting competition. That may very well change in the future, but right now I'm not interested in investing an incredible amount of hours only in painting. In recent months it became apparent to me that I'm really into building stuff from the ground up. If you have seen my video about my loon chariot, you know that I love making up backstories for miniatures or terrain pieces. So naturally modifying and kit bashing miniatures is something I am very interested in. In fact something I consider somewhat of a holy grail of mine is having an army where every single unit is modified or maybe even completely sculpted by myself. Now this would be an incredibly ambitious and time consuming project. But still, this thought or idea wouldn't let me go, so I decided to somewhat compromise. Which led me to start on a scratch build warband for Frostgrave or Mordheim. One of the bigger video games I played this year was Elden Ring. As a massive Dark Souls and open world fan, this ticks all the right boxes for me. The atmosphere, art direction and overall gameplay come together for an absolute masterpiece in my opinion. And therefore, since playing it, I always had that idea for a warband based on the living jars, animated pottery that are kinda cute but also a little bit disturbing if you think about the lore behind them. With that base idea I went to research ancient pottery, which led me to old Greek amphoras. Now Greek amphoras weren't filled with ancient remains of warriors, at least not to my knowledge, but still I asked myself what if some of them did, and what would happen if you would put the remains of wizards in these neatly painted pottery. So with this in mind I went to my mini factory. There you find the so-called Scan the World community, which includes a lot of historic artifacts that were 3D scanned by the members of this community and are freely available. If you own the 3D printer, this is a great source of models you can incorporate into your builds. And if you don't own one, it's still a great source of inspiration. Of course, I've linked the community page down below if you're curious. I downloaded a suitable jar and loaded it into Cura, the slicer software that I use. After rescaling the Amphora to a height of about 25mm, I proceeded to print it with my FDM printer. I don't have a resin printer, and usually I don't print miniatures with my FDM printer because of the layer lines. But in this particular case I already had a plan to get rid of those. With the printed amphora I started with my build. First I needed a few wire appendages, so I drilled fitting holes into the amphora and glued in florist wires that I left intentionally a bit longer than needed. Luckily I had this kit of frostgrave wizards laying around which gave me a great selection of hands. I decided to use a hand with a fitting staff and one simple open hand. The only thing to look out for is to use the right hand for the right side of course. I drilled holes into the hands to attach them better to the wires I had previously cut to the right size. Another thing that I took notice of was this little bit. I feared that the model in the end would be a bit lacking in character, so I decided to give my wizard an appropriate hat. I cut off the face part and glued the now hat-free hat on top of the amphora. 
For the feet I used the boots of an old Warhammer Fantasy Org model. When drilling your parts for a model you normally try to avoid drilling through a part. In this case however, I deliberately drilled through one boot. As with all my minis I pinned them to achieve a better bond with the bases and in this case I could use the appendage wire as a pin as well. With a hat, hands and boots in place I was able to get to the next step. Enter the green stuff. Green stuff is a two part epoxy putty. The way it works is that you have two different colored parts, the yellow filler and the blue hardener. When you mix both together, you get a green colored putty called green stuff. If you have equal parts of filler and hardener, you get a work time of about 90 minutes. After that, the green substance hardens in a gummy like state. This flexibility makes it ideal for sculpting appendages. A milliput, another two part epoxy putty, works in a similar way, but hardens very stiff and brittle. But it has other properties that makes it, in my opinion, a superior option for filling gaps. And if you want something in between these putties, just mix them both together. It really is as simple as that. Now back to my wizard. I use the green stuff to sculpt the arms and legs. Green stuff is very sticky, but when you lubricate your fingers or tools with a bit of water, it's easily shaped in the right way. I also added ring-shaped borders where legs and arms would connect to the amphora. With the rest of the mixed green stuff I tried to fill in the layer lines that were still very prominent on this piece. Now with all the putty in place I let it harden overnight. On the next day I mixed my stone texture paste I like to use on projects like this. Tile grout, water and a bit of PVA for adhesion. As I wanted a ceramic stony look, this would be perfect to give the miniature a fitting texture and to fill in the last of the layer lines. I put this all over the amphora, avoiding arms, legs and the head. Now while letting this dry, I could move on to the base. I imagined this wizard roaming around ancient runes, which I wanted to reflect in the base decoration. Therefore I took some cork pieces and cut them to size appropriate for a stony floor. I covered the whole base with PVA and arranged my cork bricks. I didn't mind the overhanging parts on the sides because I would cut them later when the PVA was dried. I also applied the texture paste I use on the amphora. With a bit of air drying clay I also bumped up the surface on the side. After a bit of drying time I applied earth texture paste on the top of the clay. I also filled in the gaps between the cork bricks with this stuff. Applying texture paste neat and cleanly can be a bit of a challenge, but with a wet brush it can easily be removed from unwanted parts, like the top of the stone tiles. Another short drying break later I also added a bit of fine turf. In the end I adhered my miniature to its base and went on to painting. Painting wise I started with a classical black prime which I followed with an application from titanium white ink from above. And these were essentially all the airbrush steps I decided to do on this particular piece. Normally I also like to use it for the base colors, but in this case I went full classical and applied the base colors with a brush. For the amphora I started with a dark brown color which I applied to the shaded areas of the amphora. I added more and more of a rust tone to this to get a smooth transition from the dark brown in the shadow to terracotta for the exposed and highlighted areas. For the boots and the hat I wanted a brown leather color. So I based these parts in the same dark brown I used for the shadows of the jar. The staff was based in a greenish grey tone. I wanted the arms and legs in a stony color so I decided to paint those in grey. I did however not start with a dark grey as a first layer, but with a dark blue. In my mind this blue would influence the later layers and make them a bit more visually interesting. While that blue was still wet I added the grey paints to the appendages, moving to lighter and lighter tones for the more exposed parts. The staff was also highlighted with grey tones that I mixed into its base color. Subsequently I highlighted the leather parts, moving from brown base tone, adding more and more ochre to the mix. 
While painting, I slowly realized that the amphora in itself looked a bit boring. I also had the hand-painted patterns of Greek pottery in my head, so I decided to add a very simple depiction of a wizard to the front of the amphora. As a bit of amateur color theory for you, I decided to use Grift Charger Grey contrast paint for that. This transparent grey has a strong blue tint, and because it's complementary to orange, it renders its black over surfaces on this or a similar color. Also, the transparent nature of contrast paints gives me the possibility to slowly build up this black and therefore a bit more control over the final look. In the end, I finished the piece by painting the base and adding some grass tufts. And after an application of a matte varnish, this Greek pottery wizard was ready for battle. This was an exciting project for me. I carried this idea around for almost a year and finally I did come around to start it. What do you think? And would you want to see more of this warband coming together in the future? If so, let me know in the comments. Also, if you liked this video, please share, like and if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. I have a lot of exciting projects in store for the coming year and probably even beyond and I would be thrilled to have you being a part of them. Also, if you are interested in more darker themed miniature stuff, I recommend this video right here. Thank you very much for watching and farewell, fellow adventurers.